at the FBI, where they're gonna train us how to be agents and hopefully let us blow some stuff up. Hopefully you get in. <laughs> so sad. We're kidding. All right, you can open the door, let them in. Oh, You're access in. granted. You're in. <laughs> Are you afraid they weren't going to let you in? No, I'm afraid they're not going to let me out. The FBI is on constant alert for bomb threats around the country. To learn how they stay one step ahead of criminals, we're here at the FBI's state-of-the-art, high-tech, cutting-edge, kind of creepy tool shed. Nothing like meeting two random dudes yeah. in a shed out in the middle of nowhere. Hi, are we deep frying a turkey? Not quite. How, how are you? I'm Tori. Jack Barrow. Jack, how are you, Jack? Pat Ray. Sorry, nice to meet you. Tori, nice to meet you. So you guys are FBI? Yes. Yes, sir. OK, not what I was picturing. <laughs> I figured you guys would be like in your suits. More of an actual laboratory. We have that, but sometimes for field work, the way that we do our preps has to adjust. This is the way a lot of the bad guys are going to be doing their stuff. So what exactly do each of you guys do? I'm a special agent bomb technician. Anytime there's an explosive involved, or the things that make them, or someone who's thinking about making them, we get involved. I am one of our improvised explosives chemistry experts. A lot of what I focus on is using my chemistry to understand Understand the improvised explosives that the bad guys are making so that we can appropriately assess our threat. When we have something that's potentially an improvised lab, Jack and his colleagues are my first phone call. So what are we cooking up today? Fertilizer bombs. Okay. They have been used as a weapon against our country on a few occasions. One of the most notorious fertilizer bombs was used to attack a federal building in Oklahoma City on April 19, 1995. Anti-government conspirators built a fertilizer bomb inside a rental truck and detonated, killing 168 people and nearly leveling the building. You're actually going to show us how to make explosives? I'm going to walk you through how I make explosives. I'm not going to teach you how to build a bomb. No. Probably wise. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way. I really don't want to visit your house. No, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. FBI chemistry experts like Jack have to continually analyze bomb compositions so that agents in the field, like Pat, know what clues to watch out for. There's different size gloves. For most people are large. You don't have any magnums? Uh, we got XL, yep. Normally, this stuff is sensitive information. There you go. <laughs> Copyright. All right, <laughs> bend over. <laughs> but I think Jack and Pat can tell that Tommy and I are professionals. So just like dissolving sugar in tea, you're going to pour that in slowly. And how much water to fertilizer do you need? What's the ratio? <laughs> Uh, our tax dollars do pay your salary, Federal Agent Jack, so tell us the damn bomb recipe already. Yeah, not too much, not too little. Little of this, little of that. Some of Jack's chemistry is like baking a cake. Baking is very precise. But only Grandma knows what that recipe really is. So you're not going to tell us the exact measurements? No, sir. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of beeping out, but it won't be us cussing. Next, we're going to do some chemistry on this to convert it into an explosive. So we need to put some hazmat gear on. We're going to be adding a very corrosive acid called, with a touch of, to our fertilizer solution. So we're putting on hazmat gear because, hey, I like my, I'd like to keep it. How you protect your precious face. I saw you crash that bike on Mythbusters. I my face isn't very important. <laughs> I feel like the Julia Childs of Boom right now. <laughs> Before the cake can rise, we have to get the proper mixture of <laughs> fertilizer. <laughs> We're going to transfer the fertilizer solution into our bucket. That's going to be our reaction vessel. The idea behind this process is to get the nitrogen in this fertilizer into a high energy, unstable state, kind of like a toddler on a sugar rush. We're inside here. Once the process is complete, the nitrogen compound's unstable chemical bonds can be broken by a detonated charge, triggering a massive energy release in the form of an explosion. But we still got some work to do before we can set this charge off. Yeah, it's strong, right? It's not really like a smell. It just burns my nose. It smells like burning. And the burning means it's working. You can slowly pour, try to minimize splashing, because there is still acid in there. For some reason, the FBI is trusting Tommy to handle the explosive material with total precision. Just slowly pour. There we go. He said slowly, Tommy. <laughs> well, at least we aren't dead. 
Oh, this is just like making cheese. I've never made cheese before, but I imagine this is what it would be like. Making homemade explosives helps the FBI know what kinds of materials to look for when they're investigating a bomb site. I feel like a Colombian drug dealer right now. Using forensic testing, the FBI is able to detect traces of chemical compounds used in bomb making. Freeze! Hey, I'm just making cheese. <laughs> I'm just making cheese. If we walked through the airport, we would get dinged instantly, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Our work here is done, so it's time to get out of the hazmat suits. Oh, takes me back to my Thunder from Down Under days. Wait, we're supposed to reuse those. Huh? Well, we're not anymore. There's our taxpayer dollars. If you follow me, we'll get something going boom. Cool. All right. Now that we've converted this fertilizer into a high energy, unstable form of nitrogen. We're gonna transfer that. Yes. Into this bag. It's time to pack this explosive powder into an actual bomb. I'm gonna have you guys make a ball out of this. Gotta get that started. And just keep rolling and you'll have a nice ball. All right, you guys happy with that? Love it. I think you're probably there, Tommy. I like to be thorough. Pretty crazy to think that we actually made this explosive ourselves without burning off our eyebrows. Luckily, Jack was there, supervising, making sure we didn't do anything dumb. We won't throw our explosives no, around. No, no, no. We will no. not throw our explosives around. <laughs> and At least not like super dumb. <laughs> not only did he catch it midair, but he hit me with the dad face. Like, so we, both, so we both were like, we don't throw the explosives. Sorry, dad. All right, we're ready to blow this up? Let's go, get Let's it done. Go. Tommy, go along. We do not throw our explosives. This is like both of our first time making explosives. And <laughs> we're not going to jail. I know. That's the best part. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> well, yeah. Thanks for letting us do illegal stuff and not go to jail. And most importantly, we're keeping you from killing yourselves. That's important. We made this with our own two hands. Tommy, you got your big boy voice? Good thing I had these in. <laughs> you know the drill. Here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! Nice. That's awesome. In the replay, you can actually see the blast wave that's created when our five pound fertilizer bomb, which is equivalent to about 10 sticks of dynamite, breaks down the chemical bonds in the nitrogen and releases all of that energy at once. Hey, is it smoking? Bigger, yeah. <laughs> That's art, baby. The blast wave wraps around the sides of the circular barrel our bomb is sitting on, creating a low pressure vortex. So when the blast wave hits the ground, bounces back up, and it kicks some dirt up. The dust maintains that shape as it travels upward. That was awesome. Told you it would work. Just a little taped up bag. That's all it is. There's no magic to it. I don't know. I felt like a wizard. You kind of look like a wizard. You just need to go a little bit gray. Okay. <laughs>